China couldn't monetize. Instead of the people sharing the wealth with their people, they just became richer and richer. So you see someone like a Mugabe or they yeah. present Mali, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, so that's what the book kind of was about. I think it was a fair representation. Of, I'm sure it has critics on both sides, but <laughs> well, it's interesting because I, I knew actually people from a lot of people from Eritrea. Mm. You know what the glory of Eritrea is? It's the Italian buildings. Like, okay. they, they have they have no like sense. Like the, to this day, it's like frozen in time because it used to be an Italian colony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the glory of Eritrea is literally the Italian buildings that were built when it was a colony. And they've done, they've never actually added to the architecture and they just keep it up. That's it. Is that and Eritrea or Ethiopia or both? <laughs> Eritrea. Eritrea was actually, the difference between Eritrea and Ethiopia is Eritrea was an Italian colony for like. Oh, okay, I guess. And so they eat, they eat pasta, which is funny because when we had, we had like a restaurant, I didn't realize there were Eritreans and they're like, oh, we should make a, we should have pasta in our meals. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they'll use the term chow. And they loved their, like, to them, the ultimate bling is like the association with Italy. So Gucci, Armani, Ferrari, all these things mm -hmm. are in their culture. Right. So they had a positive experience of right. colonialism. And that like, and, and they can travel to Italy easier than they can travel to other European countries because really? there is this relationship that they always had. Right, it right. ended in this like massive rebellion, just like at the end of, um, I think World War II, it just, the English came through and like liberated them. But I'm not so sure they were, because don't you understand, like, you know, their pride is in the period of col colonization. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the Ethiopians are just the opposite. Like they pride themselves on having never been conquered, and they're right next right. door, right? <laughs> and they are genuinely the only country in Africa. Although, although Mussolini did like take over, but they never really like established a colony because the Axis lost. But it's also the poorest country in Africa and the most dysfunctional country in Africa because they were never united. And it, it, you could call it Ethiopia, but when you get to know Ethiopians, it's just this tribe, that tribe, and the other tribe. They, they'd never, all it is is like one tribe gets a hold of the government, yeah, milks it for resources against the other tribe until that tribe gets enough yeah. to like take that guy out. So they never really understood like the European system of like thinking yeah. about yeah. A, a shared thing and they'll they'll label it ethiopia but it's just not and then so all the refugees are the ones who say like well my tribe lost so i'm out of here because i don't want to suffer but really? as soon as their tribe gets back in they would run they, over there and they, like, become part of the government you know they, so it's like not really it's not it, it's just they and you can't function the problem is you cannot function in the world economy if that's how you think and yeah, so not when it, when it, favors to say well yeah it's kind of cute that you all speak different languages and no one speaks a european language and you can't really communicate with people outside of you know and so they have this thing like we we were trying to get um a certain type of spice from them it's called bear beret yeah, and it's just a spice mixture you know what it is yeah, yeah i've had it before yeah okay but but the, in in ethiopia they call that a national treasure, and really? they they put massive tariffs on people who want to export it. Really, but you could make it in unlimited supplies because all it is is ground peppers. You know what I mean? And it's not like it's a, a limited resource. You could make as much of it as you want to because it's, it's just basically a pepper blend, right? But they yeah. but they love the Ethiopian form of it. But like so. It's stupid for the government to make it so hard to export because this could be a major crop. You you ever had the what the mita? Did you yeah, serve the other one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so my idea was: look, these people would. My idea was that it, it actually someone could, if you found people in D.C. to do this, all you would need to do is create because we have food factories in America, right? Like. 
you don't need thousands of workers to grind peppers. It's machines that can do that. If you set up these factories in Africa, you could you could put out a thousand times what they put out, and you could you could give it to the le- local people for free. But you could you could have an, a whole economy based on it because Ethiopian food is blowing up worldwide, and everybody could make money. But instead, they call it a national treasure, and they really discourage it being exported. Because they don't understand how modern people, like how the world economy works. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You they know, think I, of it as like magical. It's not <laughs> magical. You know, um, I wanted to get back to something you said earlier about, you know, you, you have to do something well. I, I do agree. I do agree with that. Um, you see the Pakistanis and all those people that come over here and um, they don't try to be rocket scientists. Right? Yes. They, they go mostly to the lowest level of uh, commerce and they just retail stores, you know, work in retail stores, things like that. And they get their kids educated and then they, and then yeah, it's, they like, yeah, it's okay. like a three tier program. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much every, every ethnicity does that. And, you know, I, I think um, Americans with all this immigration and stuff like that, a lot of people are going to have to start kind of adopting some of the methods that the migrants use to, that are effective here in America. I mean, they're changing the paradigm, I think, how you live, how you can yep. housing, you know, having a 4,000 square foot house uh, may not make as much sense anymore. You know, the cost to maintain that, where the migrants, they're living eight, ten to a 4,000 square foot house, you know. Yeah. If they were living in one that big. So. But I actually like, think, I think the housing thing as a whole, it has become totally corrupted and the, you know Kamala's thing is now that she's going to give twenty five grand mm-hmm. to any first time buyer. That's just going to anyone who knows basic economics. That's just going to send prices even more. Not even going to increase by twenty five. It's going to have a multiplier effect of like probably juicing up prices by like three times that. The average price will be triple that if that money becomes available because as a multiplier effect. So I think the government is basically like leeching now off of, or the whole economy is leeching off home prices that make no sense. And I think the smart idea is to get on wheels because they, you avoid all the taxation. The government can't, hasn't figured out yet how to hit uh, RVs. So, Hmm. and because it's minor, they just let it go. But you can live in an RV on wheels. Like I'm sitting here right now on a public road. Right. the night on this public road and the government doesn't have any way to say uh you got to pay extra for that property tax <laughs> yeah 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 and, and that's that's where they got you by the short and curlies because yeah I they think can you're... they can jack that up however much they want and really there's nothing you can do about it mm-hmm. unless you and because the, they're all doing it at the same time but that's where the pinch is and you can get out of it so i actually think immigrants that come over here and they want to follow the American dream. They're actually stupid to because immigrants generally will want to move to the suburbs where it's real expensive to honestly get away from the blacks, right? And all the noise in the city. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. but that's super expensive. You're paying a ton of money, um, and everybody wants to be there too. So that causes a bubble in those places. When if you just don't care about that that much, you can live in New York City in an RV, pay zero rent. As long as you know where to park and figure out how to do it and lay low, there's not really much they can do to get you. You could just rent a parking spot, which will be expensive in Manhattan, obviously. But there's yeah, yeah, yeah. a million places you can go until they until they figure out a way to get you. And then you just got to go to the next thing. Maybe you live on a boat. But mm-hmm. like the idea for young people right now, can you imagine a young person in D.C. who says like, I want to buy a house here and start a family. It's ridiculous. It's just not possible yeah, unless yeah. you dedicate yourself to being like at that top, you know, 5% and do everything they demand of you. And even then you're just going to be scraping by. Yeah. Unless you're very, very, you know, talented to catch a, you know, catch a break or create some breaks for yourself. Yeah. Um, unless, unless you go to the like super high end, that's right. Or your family has that kind of money, then it doesn't matter of anywhere. But to me, it's like stupid. And even the immigrants are stupid to um, a lot of times immigrants in some ways like, they, you know, a lot of employers will say to the side, they won't tell you this, 
but like the best kind of workers are the children of immigrants because they've learned to scrap mm. and make it work because their parents are clueless, right? So they have to navigate like the educational system, it, it, but it's a challenge to them. Whereas like native born kids just become zombies in school because it's so easy mm. and your parents like help you out constantly. But that scrappiness, that, that um, resourcefulness is very handy in small businesses, you know, but it's it, like in a restaurant. Oh man, I can't tell you how many like people, if, if they could learn how like to just not get caught doing something, mm-hmm. you know, and not, and not get worried about that. Like, and they were scrappy and they just like, you know what I mean? Like, like a street vendor is like, it's almost impossible to follow all the rules in the Northeast city. But if you just don't care and you just like, you know, move when the inspector comes around yeah, you can make a lot of money doing that, but you have to have that scrappiness, that almost criminal sense of, you know, Ben. I, I've I've live streamed from Brooklyn, man, Manhattan too. Man, you'd be amazed at all the people that say the hell with the rules. I'm going to sell mm. fruit right here on the street. Yeah, yeah, even things like seafood, like in in downtown Providence, there's a guy who sells seafood out of a van, yeah. and you know they let it go because I think. I think all the regulatory agencies say, look, people know what they're getting if they're, go- you know, they they know they're taking the risk. You know what so I think? If it's-, it's that type of neighborhood, they're just like, well, we'll let the economy, you know, you know it is what it is. I think what, you know what I think it is, Ben? I think it is a, it's a, it's an acknowledgement that this is really the only economy that these people can. Right. Women right. In. And instead of just taking everything away from them and putting them on welfare, let them have some dignity and hustle. What, yeah. you, you know, it, it's, it's so small fry. Why right. take away these people? You know, they have some aspiration. They can out there hustling. Right. Why take away from them? Right. And I, I think it's the government looking the other way. There's a guy on uh, St. John's in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. And he sells fish on the side of the street. You yeah. See, you know, they let him do it. You know, he's been doing it for a long time, you know, and. I think but you wouldn't to- be able to do that in Manhattan. Hmm? You wouldn't well, be able to do that in Manhattan. Right, certain parts you probably can't now. You know, you couldn't do it in the Upper West Side, right? No one would buy it from you from one for one thing. No one would buy fish off the street in the Upper West Side. Right, right. But deep in Brooklyn, where people are more accustomed to buying fresh fish, and he says fresh, they're not even going to ask him what river it came from. They just buy it. Yeah. yeah, because well, it's like a little oasis of like third world. It's like mm-hmm. third world bizarre culture, right? Like every third world country has just marketplaces. They don't have massive regulations, mm-hmm. and what what keeps you afloat or not afloat is the quality of the product. Yeah, and yeah. you know, it's if you're if you're selling bad fish, you're going to be out of business. But if if it's good enough, it might not meet regulations. But like people are going to that's going to sort it out. Yeah. Um, you don't need all that hyper regulation because look, people are basically healthy in these countries and like our hyper regulation just, it, it, it just feeds like the Walmarts and mm-hmm. the centralized who can afford to, who can afford to follow all these regulations. You wouldn't believe John in Rhode Island. If you have so much as a kitchen sink in a restaurant, a small restaurant, they'll give you a, a book of regulations, like 400 pages about what you can and can't do with the water that goes out the drain. Right. Yeah. But they don't expect you to fulfill it. They don't expect you to like actually do it. You just fake it Mm. and they let it go because they know you're, you're there's no way you could do this. Now the McDonald's McDonald's will do that because they can afford to do all that. Right. And they have people who specialize in that and they just take one model of it that fulfills those regulations and they just replicate it you know, mm. at, all, at all their restaurants and they just have a guy or they hire to do that. You know what I mean? But mm. it, it's a weird economy, but like everybody looks the other way. And are you kidding me? Illegal, illegal employees. That's like every small business in Rhode Island has immigrants, but they don't want to actually police it because then you'd have all of these immigrants on welfare yeah, who could be like causing massive problems? So it's a, yeah, it's like an underground. They call it the gray economy. It's not like yeah, the black right. economy, like the black market. You're it's not the something economy. Really- it's like it, it could be estimated to be as much as like half of the economy in some places. I think so. Like in DC, man, 
there's some streets you can't even walk up because you have to form damn near a single pile line because they're vendors. Yeah. What's selling their wares like fruit and clothes and blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, I can definitely believe it. And like with landlords, you're, you're a landlord. I don't know if you have this. I don't want you to reveal anything. But like in Rhode Island, in, uh, up in the Northeast, you have basements of these like apartment buildings. And it used to be that that basement couldn't have occupants because it used to be like there was a coal furnace down there. Yeah. That was like, you know, that coal smoke and you have these huge bins of coal. But now it's all high efficiency. Mm-hmm. So that whole basement, like in order to like have the hot water tank and all that stuff, it just takes like five percent of the floor plan of the basement. Right. And so you could build walls and build an apartment in the other part. That's not legal, but everybody does it. And right. you put like a uh, you know, a, a guy who's like in his twenties there. You're not going to put little kids there because it doesn't really have the right, like, emergency exits and things. But you put a guy in his 20s there, you charge him half what he pay anywhere else, and he's a pig in shit. You know what I mean? Like, he's perfectly yeah. happy. And even when the cops get called, because that happened to me, one guy, he's like, uh, he knew it was illegal, technically. Mm-hmm. So he thought, we played a little game of chicken, because I was like, you're not paying me rent, you're out of here. And he's like, go ahead, call the cops. And I actually did. No, I was like, I was just... uh playing chicken with him but he's like actually i'm gonna call the cops the cop came and he's like dude you gotta get out of here and then he took me aside the cop and said actually you're the one who's gonna get in trouble if he doesn't buy what i'm saying you see what i'm saying mm-hmm. but like he didn't let him know and the kid because he was an immigrant was afraid and bolted but even that so even the cops understand what's going on here yeah, yeah, yeah they understand yeah because if you if you actually enforced the uh that like you 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 can only live in legal residences you'd have literally tens of thousands of homeless people on the street the next day and all the landlords would go under because yeah. that little extra rent is is their profit the rest mm. of it's just paying the bills now you you wouldn't be able to force it even if you tried um i mean i've seen cities cut water off to people with more than one property you know, make them register as landlords and stuff like that. But still, I think with all these migrants coming, they're going to have to relax a lot of regulations that they used to have that yeah, people from, uh, yeah, I believe in that. Because the migrants are going to do it regardless. They're going to rent in unregulated places. We've shown that here. Yeah. And it's five hours, 43 minutes. We have 52 people in the audience, and I'm surprised no one has come on to argue with Ben. I oh, mean, I thought you. I thought you took people off. They all left. No, no, I think, you know, I think they, they. They. You must intimidate some. And uh, <laughs> well, I guess what. Tell us as to come on. She's talking shit in the chat. Grace, Grace yes. wants to talk some shit here. Roger, Roger, at least come on and we can talk about live streaming here in DC. All the, all the are asleep. They ain't gonna be awake till <laughs> what? Eleven, twelve. They Man, left. Yeah, too have an expectation for me. You had to come back and get out. <laughs> the soft bigotry of low expectations. <laughs> ben is over here practicing high expectations, in it? <laughs> <laughs> but John, what do you think about that? It's called the, I forget what theory. It's called the, do you know these two guys, John McWhorter and mm. Glenn, what's his yeah, name? Yeah, Lowry or whatever, yeah. Glenn, La- Glenn Lowry, right? Mm, mm. And they're, they try to be, like, they're kind of countercultural among blacks. But when they talk about IQ, I saw them go down that path and they were like, yeah, the numbers seem to be real, but we can't go there yeah, because yeah. the only way we can deal with that is by saying like that, that theory. Remember there was that football guy. He was like, blacks are good at this. Jews are good at this. Whites are good at this. Why can't we all get along? Yeah. 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 Actually, I think it's common sense. Yeah. 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 And yeah. If you, if you, but it always is like, okay, well, blacks can dance and sing, so that's what they should do. But in actual fact, like customer service is a massive part of the economy, and I do think that it's genetic that black people are way more friendly and social than whites, and who are in fact way more social than Asians. You just walk by black people, and they're curious and interested, no matter what it is. It, I only when I go when I'm around black people. I hear all the little kids go, damn, that guy's tall, right? Among whites and Asians, they never mention that. But, like, you just walk into a minority, and they just, like, they think it's funny and interesting. And they'll say it out loud. And there's not this, like, you know what I mean? Like, this kind of, like, 
And so I think, like, being effusive and friendly like that, why not lean into it instead of saying, like, okay, we got to become inventors and we got to learn how to do what white people do. I just don't get it. Man, you know, I was going to say this a little earlier. You know, I was, I was in what they call STEM. They didn't call it STEM uh, when I got into mm. it. I was a software developer. I, I like to say I still am a software developer. <coughs> you never stop being a software developer. And, you know, when I used to go on interviews, a lot of times the guys that would be about my age, they would ask me a question like, what was your first computer? Now, I would say hey, Commodore 64, and they may say Commodore 64 or 10 or whatever at the time. But yeah. at that time, if your parents bought you a computer, you really had to want it because they were expensive. Mm. Right? And you had to really want it because you had to hack on it. It wasn't like the graphical user interface of today. Right, right. right. And so I remember spending hours as a kid hacking, writing little primitive code. Right, right. And with I all the prompts and the colon and all that stuff. Yeah, I remember I that. Any friends that come over and do that shit with me, right? They wanted to go outside and play basketball or whatever. Mm-hmm. And what I'm saying is that, you know, it's kind of like a natural selection of sorts. So all yeah, these. Yeah, yeah. Focusing on STEM and things like that, I don't think it's going to work. I don't think right, right, right. You are an outlier. You're an right. outlier because there are a lot of black nerds, but proportionately less than you would find white nerds. Right, right. And then you know, if you are a white nerd, I would imagine that the corporate world is going to identify you and bring you put you far, far up the ladder. Right. If you if you Yep. You type, you're going to go far up the ladder. And so you're not going to be in STEM anymore. You're going to be the head of the company or something or head of a division. They're it, not depends, gonna... it depends because don't you think there are two types of nerds? There's one type of nerd that likes that likes like just following what other people are doing. And then there's like an innovator type of nerd who's like that Steve Jobs type who's like wants to actually envision a whole different way of doing things well you know and at that point you kind of evolve out of stem and you kind of become you know steve jobs wasn't down in the weeds coding right he was i think he was there originally wasn't he i don't know i think he was more well he may have been originally but again you know if you're very very talented you're not going to be down in the weeds coding uh you know the business you're hiring other people to do the busy work yeah you know he's more of a visionary you know, I remember listening to him saying he didn't want any buttons on the iPhone. I don't think right, he liked right, it. right, right, like, right. He was a guy. He was a guy, and this is an interesting thing because nerds generally think in terms of practicality. They don't think in terms of like aesthetics, right? As much, they're like, right. I don't care what it looks like, just that it works. But he was a guy who blended an understanding of that with an understanding of like actually consumers care more about things looking clean and sleek. Right. And they call it industrial design. Yeah. But like, it's more, and, and actually human nature cares more about that than functionality. Yeah. You because know. because that's why Androids, I don't think the Android model is, I think the iPhone model is better to say, like, there's only so much many things you could do here, and it's not open to anyone doing anything, but like, it's safe. And the Android model is anyone can do anything, and that'll breed innovation, and people just prefer the safety because most, for most people, they just want to do what they need to do on it. And they don't care about like, well, you could do this. You know what I mean? They don't yeah. want the viruses. Yeah, 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 yeah. There isn't probably more functional. You know, and back to the, you know, the black guys, you know, black people and stuff like that. Yeah. Mm. This is on my own opinion based upon my experience. I very rarely saw, I probably can count on one hand how many black Americans that I worked with in South in 20 years. Is that right? Or developers. Even with DEI? Hmm? You never well, saw DEI yeah. hires? And you're not going to DEI a software guy. You're not going to do that. Like You might DEI a manager of the well, software. Don't really matter. I see what you're saying. In the weeds, it matters what you do. Yeah. You got to be You got to be writing that code or you're going to have chase glitches all over the place. So the code has to be tight, concise, you know. Yeah, so and, they work in administration. Right, so it may be your manager, you know, something like that. Um, but I just never, saw, I just never saw them. And one of the things, you know, I worked with an Indian lady, and I always remember what she said. I was developing this some software with a group of people, and 
And they asked her if she wanted to work on the team, and we were moving to .NET, .NET, uh, Microsoft programming platform, whatever. And so she says um, she didn't want to learn it. She didn't want to you know, progress in her, you know, software career. And I think, yeah. you know, we've pushed a lot of kids or encouraged a lot of kids to get into STEM, but we haven't told them that, like, it's going to be a forever learning process. Because yeah. I'm not going to stand still and let you make a career for 20 years. You got to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Your children are going to be screaming in the background. You got to be practicing, trying to get better in your job. Oftentimes, it's not going to pay you to go learn. You got to figure this shit out on your own. Right. And that takes a different personality, I think, than, uh, than most yeah. people in probably. And, and you, find, you find a much bigger difference in uh, between the sexes than you do between the races. And yeah. Uh, like yesterday I was, I was in court and I never know, you know, with these like, uh, misdemeanors that are like very hard to understand. Like, it's not like I was dragged in there for something obvious. It's just like bizarre kind of like I was kicked out of all of the batterers classes because they didn't like what I said on YouTube. So it was interesting because a male, this male judge, even when he was dealing with like typical cases, he would explain the law and you could tell he always drew it into like the sixth amendment. Even when he's dealing with someone who he knows is just going to say like, yeah, my attorney told me to nod my head and say yes. But with female judges who are the preponderance in these low level um, situations, they don't explain the law and they, they, speak kind of more emotionally like oh i can see you're making progress and i'm glad you have been on the right path they don't really care about the law but guys i think can like be like you know nerds about the law yeah and so this guy when i came the last time i came up it was a woman judge and i was accused of something i was accused of live streaming a class which wasn't true but her thing was like, well, we can't let you get away with that if you did that. So I think we'll have a hearing. This guy, he said he had a whole conference before I was even up there, but I could overhear parts of it. And he was talking about the nuances of like this whole regime of battering classes. And he was saying it's never been tried. It's never been like tested in the Supreme Court. And like the whole thing is kind of shaky legally. And then he just gave me a kind of pass and said, like, if you can find another way to do this, we don't care. Do you see what I'm saying? So it was like, yeah. it was actually like, he was like a, a legal nerd. Uh, and I just don't think that women belong in these areas that like, you really do need someone who cares about, I had a, I had a woman judge. I read her the law. She shrugged her shoulders <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the prosecutor laughed when I read the law. And I'm glad because it's on the transcript now of the hearing. And I think a male judge would be like, well, how the F do you just not respond to that? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I was saying I was unlawfully arrested because I read the law. You know what I mean? And so then now that gives me a possible lawsuit because I got it on the transcript. Hey, Ben, let me respond to this comment here. And then I want to ask, yeah. I think you have a couple questions, too in the chat uh you know last time then uh Imperius was up here you know i was just putting him backstage if he were uh just going on and on and on but he was talking about shutting down the channel and yeah you know calling people pedophiles and you know right Dennis, you know dennis said you know he's a nice guy he comes up on the show and you know there's just some things i think you shouldn't say about people and ped pedophile is one of them uh so that is interesting. Uh, you know, so I, I just don't think you should do that, man. Like, you know, if you believe it, call the police. Go right. ahead and call them a pedophile. Right? I think I, I have a new uh, term for people like that. I call them pedof. They have pedophilia philia, which means the love of talking about pedophilia all the time, yeah. which is a mental illness. Because whatever you want to say about me, for example, like, no one has even made an accusation that I, it's just that what they're saying is I, if in any way feel like you're sexually off, I'm going to go to the most extreme case and just say that. And I think it's just antisocial. Yeah. There's it, 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 no light there. There's just heat. 
someone said the blacks are scared of the white man. You know, it, it is very interesting though, Ben, that um that uh you know I have an interesting you know when I when I first saw you guys, you know, my, I think my opinion of you uh, again was formed based upon my initial impression. Mm. You know, I didn't know any background, I haven't looked up any background on you. you know, I kind of judge people as they go, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, my thought was that, you know, you seem to have a good relationship with your daughter. And, yeah, you know, for a lot of people, don't have that with their parent, particularly if it's a daughter, father. Yep. Particularly in the black community, <clears throat> to be fair with you. Yep. And it probably seemingly is in growing in the white community, too. So I always took it, the hatred for you guys. And again, I haven't watched much of your show at the time. So I said, where the hell is this strong hatred coming from? And the, I thought it was like kind of the envious of your relationship with you and your daughter. And well, but you know, but you know, actually, there's more hatred from whites than blacks. Well, again, like I said, you know, you see <laughs> the Ava's of the world. You see the, um, you know, and I'm not criticizing Ava. I like Ava. But I mean, she, you're right in that she has some, you know, animosity towards you as well. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but she also she also will always laugh at my jokes, so I can see that it's not as deep as she might want it to seem. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she's always yeah. talking about me in sexual yeah. terms, which she, you can say is well, what happens with women who try to scold you sexually is they'll often like basically tell you their fantasy that they're having about you, and it's really easy to say like, "Oh, wow, it sounds like you're really excited about me sexually." And, and let me they can't really say anything. Let me take, make sure this is not a porn bomber. Porn bomber, Ben. Give me one second. Put a picture up. Here we go. Make sure this porn bomber. <laughs> you're not a porn bomber, are you? No, I would uh, never be. A, they Ben knows me. No, uh, not a oh, she's bomber. she's one of these sexually obsessed. Oh, is that right? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, no, I, I want to just ask a question. So when you're talking about um, the relationship with your daughter, so you think people are jealous of that, what, what are they jealous of? Yeah, like like you in particular. Like, you could see, John, that's a picture of her eyes. She's a beautiful woman, but she's <laughs> in her late 30s. She's been married for 11 years, no kids. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, so if you say what... She she asked me like what could I possibly be envious of, and there's a long list of things you can be envious of. Okay. With yeah, grace. So be specific. Be specific. Like what is it? Well, like you're not fertile, which is not your fault, but like you're not fertile. I don't care about like, that. As far as you she grace. has her whole reproductive. You know, I mean, I, I'm not jealous of grace though. Nobody's jealous of grace. Well, that's what everyone. You That's think all everybody's is. jealous of Grace, but nobody but is. Nobody is. Like no we one feel on sorry earth for Grace. Is, uh, we, we, let's we say, feel let's sorry say, okay, but you admit Grace is attractive and young, right? Yeah, I mean she's mid, you know. But but go ahead. I mean, well, okay, fine. but like, but if I say she's young, you won't deny that, right? Well, of course, we all understand what age is. Okay, yes. You don't mm -hmm. think there's anyone on earth? who's older, who's envious of a younger person. But you're saying people are envious of your relationship. What is, so what well, is the relationship that well, I, you that, think? Well, well, I say that. Oh, okay. You say, all right. So yeah. what's the relationship you think people are envious of? I would well, ask when, you that. When, when I first, is that obvious? When, when no, I I'm first, asking him. I'm asking him. Well, when I first saw him, uh, them, I should say, uh, it was on CT's channel, and, you know, it's a black channel. Well, I don't want to call it that, but it was, let's just say they were discussing black issues, or it was a primarily black channel at the time. And, and uh, there seemed to be a lot of animosity. Now, I didn't know Ben's background or anything like that. And so my initial take on it, based upon just looking at them, and they seem to be a close father-daughter, you know, seem to be a close father-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're not poor. They're not drug addicts. And Grace came on Be Brave. And she clearly has some intelligence. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Brave said it at the time, and I agreed with him, you know, she could easily go into corporate sales or something like that. And I said, yeah, I think so. You know, she's chatty back and forth. She's, she's assertive. <laughs> 
sale, you know, sales fields. It would. Yeah, like a pharmaceutical rep, she could easily be. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, fair enough. That's another field. Mm-hmm. And so, with all the hatred and criticism, you know, she, she's five, ten pounds away from firming up and. <laughs> Pseudical office and he always brings that up. I'm a stickler for people reaching their potential. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, but <laughs> but but the relationship. So so, so, so in that sense, yeah. mm-hmm. you have and, and again, I'm a black guy. Let me cut my camera so you can see I am a black guy. I am John <laughs> I see that. So I yeah, deal with people. I deal with people, you know, all the time and. A lot of the times, you know, my tenants, many of them are black and have been black over the years. <laughs> they, they, their, 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 their parent, mother, father relationship is not very good. Okay. And a lot of them are angry. Yeah, not, can I say something? Sure. Hold on. John, this lady's telling you she's not jealous of me, right? Yeah. Mm. No, I'm not. Oh. Look at you. <laughs> no, I'm not jealous of you. I'm sorry. You okay. want me to be, but I'm not. Oh. Okay, okay. Well, let right, me just... Well, well, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. I gotta flex a little. Yeah, here she goes. Look, what are you not jealous of? Tell me what you're not jealous of. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, much. No. That's a dad flex. I have a... Wait. Hold on. No, I want to say, though. Mm-hmm. So, um, John, me and the Fed Up were talking to one of our mutual friends, who is a male streamer. And we were having an argument, and he took my side in the argument, and he said, I don't know, Fed Up, you seem like you're just, like, a little over-invested. Like, I don't really get what your, what your point is in this argument. She later messaged him and said, oh, so you're just going to turn on me and take her side just because you want her on your stream to ogle at her tits? Now, you're making you're so making like, shit up right now. I have no idea what Facebook. you're talking about. You're making shit up right now. Well, I saw the DM. I saw the screen. Show it then. Show it then. Show it. Well, I don't have to. Well, I'm just saying. No, show it. Look, show look, it or shut the fuck I, up. No, show it or shut the fuck up. Thing. This is what angry you're making people. shit you're up right now. If it didn't happen. Show it. Bitch, no, 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 no one has an obligation to, this isn't a court oh, of law. Oh, okay, so we're no just going to throw has, shit out that makes no sense. No one has an obligation to show you proof of anything. Oh, okay, so, well then don't make claims you can't back up. You're no, making you, claims no, I, you can't no. back up. Anyone can make claims, and you know it's true. Now, It's not true, that's why I'm okay, asking. Okay, say how it's the not true. Don't You don't about. say like, okay, well you need to bring in evidence. No, you don't have to bring in evidence. Oh, but, okay, so we can just throw but it now, but so, now, yeah, but now, but I want to respond to John. All right, so listen, listen. To you and all right, John, John, hey, guess what? Grace and wants to the problem and said Ben had hit her. And um, hold on, hold on one second. Hold on, really hard, hold on one second. Really hard. Hold on. And she second. wanted hold to get away, and he wouldn't second. let hold her. On. Hold on. One that, that's hold on. That's something that actually happened. You can go ahead and say this. I have the one second. Just give me yeah. one second. Just give me one second. Sure. Now, mm-hmm. I think the reason that girls are envious of Grace is because <laughs> no, I'm just going to say this. Envious of Grace. Okay. You're so crazy. Quiet. 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 See, black men can't do this. They have a hard time doing this. I'm going to tell you. Shut your fucking mouth for a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay, now. Sure, sure, just go ahead. Minute, just for a minute, then you can talk. Sure, John, go ahead. what percentage of women do you think have trouble with weight and are aware of it? Like, are, you know, are like constantly trying to lose weight, like Oprah type thing. Above 50%. Uh, I think it's more like 80% of women Never have trouble. <laughs> have Never. trouble with weight. Okay, ah, I think 80% of women think, like, I could use a few pounds, or I wish I was this, or I wish I was that. I would say 80%, maybe 50%, like, it's a massive problem, like, it's 100 pounds or more. But but, um, what's interesting is, if you ever watch Grace's eating habits, she eats voraciously, she eats fast food. She's like a pig. I understand you could say, I I think John would agree with me, like, Grace is out of shape but like if she exercised Mm. i don't really think it's so much excess weight it's just like a lack of exercise exercise. yeah she says firm up and i agree and she agrees firm up yeah Mm. but if you're if you have a close relationship with your father or a man could be your husband and you're trying to please that man like but you're not doing it in a way that (laughs) <laughs> it's like fearing but like wanting is like positive i think mm. girls will want to look good and it's just easy for them 
because they want to make that man happy. That's the, and a father feels happy. You're, I'm proud when Grace is walking around with me in a way that I wouldn't be if she was fat. And it's just sure. intuitive. It's not like I got to yell at her or she's in fear. It's just, you're just not going to need to overeat because in a sense, what women are doing is they're trying to fill their daddy hole. With, and if your daddy hole is filled with daddy, which I know could be taken the wrong way, but like, I mean, if you're just, if you just have that, but ben, ben, then she's you don't fat. have that problem. She's and and she's women fat. resent the fact that it's so easy because if you don't have that, it's going to be really hard for you not to want to like try to console yourself with food. Okay. Which is, so exactly. Ben, listen, Ben, listen, be quiet for a minute. So Grace has gotten fat, but she still has a great relationship with her father. So what do you blame? No, actually, on? Grace has lost weight. It, when John said like John, John's honest, he'll say five to 10. He used to say 10 to 20. And, you know, as uh, like the problems in our relationship have decreased, like that yeah, you're, uh, you're has obfuscating. improved. No, you're obfuscating. She, she's literally, like, for her height, she should not have the belly and the arm fat and all of that that she has, right? Yeah, she's got big tits, great, but yeah, I mean, she has no ass. She's She's gotten fat, right? If you pinch her belly, if you pinch her arms, you can see it, <laughs> right? But no. she has a great relationship with her father. So what, what do you blame that on? Well, she, but but then she gets all of this hostility, including like with people who I can't talk about. That has something. nothing to do with the question I just asked you. What do you blame it on? Well, her, yeah, her that, weight gain. That's what I'm saying. Like she's she has a lot. Like she smokes cigarettes because she's anxious because people are attacking her constantly. Uh, it's everybody else. I got you. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Excuse yeah, me. it's excuse everybody me. else. Yeah, it's not her relationship with me. No. That it's a stressor in her life. That's what can't be. is the yeah. opposite of a stressor in her life. Absolutely. And everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody knows that. Excuse me, ma'am. You want the receipts? Okay, you want to sit there and call me fat, whatever. You are a liar. Here's the receipts, okay? Look. Yeah, I'll... sure. Okay. This is your text. This is your message. Shalin wants an invite to outlining server. Many psychos are there. I'd vote against it, to be honest, but it's up to you. Also, thanks for being an absolute ass crack to me just because Grace has her titties out for you to ogle. Yeah, that's not my, that's not my Does that sound name. like That's a not my screen, or my username. That's oh, not okay, my now, username. Not username. Yes, it is, bitch. Show, John, show, John, show, John. show me. Does it say fed up Southern girl? Does it say Southern? Anywhere. All right, now it's time for me to pull up my pictures of you. Hold on. You can do that, but you look like a 50-year-old woman right now. All right, That's fine. So, you can do that, but you just pulled up somebody else's to be jealous DM. Of. You just pulled to up be somebody of. else's DM that did not have my username. Nothing. On it. You're not jealous of anything, girl. Definitely not. You can show it all day long. Everybody's seen it. Love you. Go back to seething. Bye. Yeah, nobody's seething. You're you're such a psycho bitch. What the fuck are you even talking? But John, about? I wanted to say, I think the difference between black and white culture on this <laughs> is that blacks are less angry at me less prone to be angry at me um because i think there's more of a there's less of an experience of like my father was weak but th that my father was absent right right yeah, yeah. you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying or, yeah. so you're not as angry if your father's absent i've heard I've, I've run into really a lot of young black women who say like my father died young or he was in jail or you know, there's just kind of more of a, like, absence problem than that he was weak. And I think kids who have we a weak father become angry. Kids who have no father, they lack discipline, but, like, they don't, they're not really so much angry at men. And mm -hmm. I actually don't think that in black culture, generally speaking, there is as much hostility towards masculinity. Um because black culture is oriented towards masculinity, right? Like, so, so like, boring. if you look at rap music, it might be a juvenile kind of masculinity, but it is a kind of masculine culture. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I've long said, that, you know, I think that, um, you know, a lot of times you, you'll hear black men talk about their fathers, like, my dad was a G. Right, right. Girl, you know, like, there he is. Right, yeah. yeah. You know, but I think, the men who just, you know, it's kind of like that Bronx tale. And I showed that here. What, have you ever seen the movie Bronx tale where the little boy came out with the money from Sonny or whoever it was? It, 
and no. Al Pacino, whoever was that, Al Pacino, he comes out and he slaps the little boy and he takes the money back to the man and tell him to take the money back or whatever it was. And I think children, young boys in particular, look up to the man who, who's strong, you know, who's not weak. And yeah. They will, weak, they will find it somewhere else, you know. I, I yeah, think, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like if you say like ghetto culture, which I know is not synonymous with black culture. Hmm. But ghetto culture, you have like the the drug dealer, the basketball star, like those guys are are seen as the stars of the neighborhood uh, against the backdrop of a kind of like matriarchal culture. But the boys rebel against that kind of mama. Yeah. Stuff, you know what I mean? And yeah. so you have a, two distinct cultures. But then again, when the boys become criminals, the women protect them. Yeah. And nobody participates with the cops. So, I mean, it's different in white culture. You don't find you. It's just a different setup. I don't know that it's worse or better in actual fact, but it is different. And I think that's cult cultural, but I think culture, this is what people won't say. Culture stems from deeper waters, which have to do with genetics, I think. And so there are some things that are unchangeable. You could transplant a black kid to Japan and the, he will kind of end up half Japanese and half black because the genetics will come through. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a bad thing because I think, I think the genetics are good. Like, I think America is superior to Norway because it's a superior culture that has, I, I like the mix we have, like 13% black, 60% white, and the rest a mix of Asians and Hispanics. I think it's a good mix. What um, do you like? What's that? What mix wouldn't you like? Well, I think, like, if the whole country was like D.C., like Chocolate City, I mm. think you find massive corruption. Um, and like, like it's not it's done. Right it turns into like Haiti, you know. Like, like what's going on in New York right now? Yeah, I I think the problem is if you look at DEI culture, what it it actually like it's interesting. You say like it doesn't it doesn't affect programming because programmers have to program, and mm -hmm. no one's gonna like tolerate people who can't program in programming. This but I know. I know where, where, where blacks can easily get jobs is in education. Mm -hmm. Education is kind of a shit show. It's just a bullshit show. Like no one actually, but you won't find them in like elite schools where they actually know how to do education. But like in public schools, it's very easy. You, you, you can fall into like administrative jobs in middle schools as blacks. Like you can be a principal easily. Um, and yeah jobs like that where it's kind of like nobody really cares because the whole system is kind of garbage yeah middle management hr those kind of things but like it doesn't affect it doesn't affect things where it really matters competency really matters i agree with you know ben this is a high school that is close to where i live and you can see the people on the screen that work there we did a critique one day yep. and i mean it was just Job after job after make work job, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. And, and what goes on in these schools is there's there's like a benevolent culture, yeah. Like you know what I mean. But it's like it's everyone's just biding their time. You know what I mean. It's just managing people and trying mm -hmm. to have a good time, um, and not having any like major incidents. But there's no impetus on education. Like they might say we're doing Shakespeare. It's part of the curriculum. But no one's taking it seriously. No one is actually no, thinking you can read Shakespeare and really like affect young people and have them like turned on to what Shakespeare is all about. It just doesn't happen. They don't care. Okay. What what you know, I will I agree, say. I agree with you on that. I, I, I think that, you know, many of the young kids in the in inner cities, after they get reading and writing down, the majority of them should be sent out to work. You know, not in the field or anything. So yes. I don't mean take that wrong. But okay. learn how to work somewhere, you know, if your parents don't want to They could be plumbers. They could be plumbers, right? Well, you know, in my opinion, I think... Don't you that, think, Ben, isn't plumbing like a, a very admirable 
goal? I don't think plumbing is an admirable goal, but it, it's a skill. Okay, but it's uh, relatively but if, simple. Yeah, if these poor yeah, people, can, if these it, poor it, people can learn plumbing, don't you think that's a good you know skill? That we give you some autonomy. <laughs> But it's my opinion, based upon hiring plumbers over the last 20 years, it, by and large, it's like a pass-down trait or pass-down skill. Yeah, yeah. But it's a good skill because, you know, you, if, you, if you're not willing to learn how to do that skill, then those people, you, even, you know, they're, well, they're just dumb blats, right? Well, there's, no, there's, no, no, no. See, I didn't say that. You didn't hear me say the word dumb, but what I said was Plumbing. No, I'm talking, I was talking about what Ben said. Uh, plumbing is like a passed down skill, in my opinion. You often talk to a plumber, you say, well, my uncle, my dad, my mother's mm -hmm. boyfriend, somebody. Yeah. Uh, what What if you had parents who were highly educated and you still wanted to do a skill like that, like plumbing, you know, carpentry, something like that? Would that be acceptable? You know, both of my parents are educated, and they wanted me to go to college. My dad, he was a little bit more on the industrial side, and he, he wanted me to learn a trade and stuff like that. That wasn't my interest, but yeah. had he been doing it, had he been a tradesman, I, I would have had an easier pathway into trades. I would have learned it, at least mm -hmm. the base from him. Hey, well, this is a pipe cutter. This is a... a mm -hmm. Inch pipe, a half inch pipe. Or machinery, yeah, machinery, something like that. But, but Ben, do you think that that's a, a lower well, see, see, I would, I would say in general, like it, it's, it, 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 like there are people who are fall outside of the realm. But like when we were in New Hampshire recently at a hotel, there was a New Hampshire has almost no black people in it. But we went to a Dairy Queen where it was all black folks, and um. That like I think because it's customer service, and because relatively Dairy Queen is just a blueprint you just put down, um, them like kind of having warm relationships with each other, that is like that's a good fit I think, and like sometimes okay. you, you'll be traveling uh, you're in off. the middle of um, like <sighs> in the middle of nowhere. There's like a rest stop or something, and you'll find like an ethnic group. And maybe they're related to each other, but they'll just sort of take over that plaza and, you know, work together as kind of like a, uh, an enlarged mm -hmm. family. And, like, I think that's a good deal because they as a group but, are but worth ben, a lot to whoever owns that plaza, ben. which is probably going to be a white guy or an Asian. Okay, Ben, let me ask you a question, okay? Um, so, I know you're highly educated, all right? You got yeah. your ass. All right, so... If your children were to go into the trades, into some sort of trade like that, like plumbing or carpentry or, yeah. you know, construct, or, you know, how would you feel about that? Well, my son, my son is pursuing, uh, what does he do, Grace? Electrical? Plumbing. plumbing. But it's a wrong fit for him because he's incredibly artistic and sensitive. So it's, it's, it's not the right fit for him. You got to have a personality type that's just like, they call him a uh, phlegmatic. Uh, like you know, certain type of people, they just like doing, they just like doing an, a relatively simple job, working hard, and then coming home and watching TV and having a family. He's an artist by yeah. his nature, and so like I think he'd be much more successful leaning into that, even though that's more of a difficult field. But he's incredibly talented. Wait, leaning into what? Leaning into the the artist. Being an artist, being an artist. Yeah. How's he gonna make money? Well, there are to make a lot of money, and uh, if if you do graphic art, graphic design, you you can have it has a huge commercial aspect to it, advertising and all that stuff. But fine art is more competitive, but also there's tons of money in that if you can get to the top, you know, the elite level of it. So, so do you look down upon people who do trades like trade schools type of see, thing? The problem with you is you don't listen. You don't no, I'm listen. Just asking you a question. No, 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 no. You're always trying to like you're, you're trying to work some angle by pretending to ask questions, but it's just underneath it is just hostility, mm -hmm. and then you you put words in my mouth, which have nothing to do with what I say, and so you're not receptive. And the fact that you're not receptive means that like you're you're alienated from yourself because a woman should be receptive, not aggressive. You should open your okay. ears and let me penetrate your ears instead of closing them off and trying to penetrate. I don't, 
I don't me know that I want stupid you questions right that make here. no sense. I, okay, let me ask you again. You just want to say, do you look down on blue collar people? Like that makes yeah. no sense. No, I just said blue collar jobs are perfect for blue collar people who have a blue collar personality type of personality. So you don't think that? So you think that based on your personality type, you have to choose your job based on that, even though there are financial if you have, responsibilities. If you have the kind of mind that can handle, like, uh, law school and becoming a lawyer and, like, presenting things in that way, you should not become a plumber, no. Okay, so... Okay, so you're trying to dictate, based on your personality, you should do this, even if it's not financially responsible, do this anyway. So... Get into student loan No, debt I'm not you, saying that. You don't think lawyers make a lot of money? You moron! I have, I have two idiot. brothers that are lawyers. Yes, you fucking moron. Bidding for women. I have two brothers that are lawyers. Do bidding, so don't talk to me. Bidding, that men should do right. things that are fitting for men. Blacks should generally do things that are fitting for blacks. Whites should what's, do things... Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's Whites. fitting for Asians blacks? Do, whoa, do whoa, whoa, let's go back. For let's Asians. Go back. Like, Obviously. Rewind. Wait, 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 certain... There are certain <laughs> outliers who should do what's Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stupid listen. idiot. All right. Listen. You said there are certain well, what's things fitting that for are you is to find a bridge blacks. to jump off of it. So Google a local bridge that's tall enough that you can do what you need to do because you're just <laughs> what a moron. Are fitting under- for blacks. What does that even mean? There are jobs that are fitting for blacks, is what you just said. What does that even mean? What do you mean by that? There are jobs that what, are what do you life. mean when you say niggers should this and niggers should that? Like, what do you? I, mean? I never said that. Yeah, you so do. Yeah, you do. How you're about a southern. You explain you're what a you southern said. girl, and you think niggers this, niggers that. So, what a niggers <laughs> what? What? You tell that. me what niggers means for you. <laughs> I never said that. I'm repeating back to you what you just said. What What are jobs fitting for black? Well, tell me about niggers. What do you you use that word? And you say the niggers this and the niggers that. What what does that mean for you? I have never said that. So. That's a lie. Now you're going to say, show me receipts. Okay, well, let's use the term blacks, which is not the term you prefer to use around whites. But anyways, but now that there's a black person here, we're going to clean it all up, right? I'm supposed to sweep up for you. No, <laughs> you think blacks are worthless and should be killed, correct? I have never said that. <laughs> No, I disavow that entire statement you just said. It's so okay, ridiculous. Okay, so what use are black people? Uh, they're people, so they're useful. Okay, to do what? Anything they want to do. You're okay, so if you look up and you got heart, you got high level heart surgery, and you see a black guy, do you feel as good about that as when you see a white yes, dude? Yes, absolutely. Yes. You're lying, but on white people panels, you'll just go ahead and you know say that I'm and a whole ton to of other. Out co- why you said that shit? That was so fucking crazy. Like you're you're talking to a on a a black man who is all right. How about this? And you're like, would you marry? Are, would you marry a black that. man so in your crazy. account? Would you? Let's say let's say you you weren't married. <laughs> would you marry a black man? If I was in love with him, yes, I would. But why do you add the is? Why wouldn't you just say yes? Okay. Yes. There you go. Just as easy as a white man. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. So you're just lying. Okay. So you're a liar. <laughs> why do you think and... I'm lying? That that just shows your obvious racism. The fact that you're like, nope. You know what? No, I'm you're just saying I've heard you talk accurate. when you're around white people. And it's a very different conversation than you have when there's a black man here. I, I know that's true. You know that's this. true. I don't have any you're problem with there being John a black to, man you're here. To make you John do. feel like I don't know what you're talking about. I, right. I have so no. you're just a liar, and I don't know what the point of having a conversation with someone who's just a liar is. Okay. You, do you yeah. think there's a difference between blacks and whites? Of course, there's a difference. Yes. What's the difference? What's the difference? That's genetic. Yeah. What and what is that genetic difference manifest in? What do you mean manifest? What do you mean? Is there a difference in intelligence? Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. So, so what is the difference? Uh, Personality that, type? N- no, it's it's melanin is basically the difference. Okay. Yeah. So you're just lying. How am I lying? 
Do you think blacks are better at sports? Yeah, that's called genetics. Yeah, okay, but that's I not melanin. This. They're not better at sports because they have darker skin. There's no sport of having dark skin, moron. Yeah, no, it's genetics. I told you. Okay, genetics. so that has to do with like muscle tissue yes. and testosterone. Sure. Yep. Okay, so it's not just melanin, moron. No, you asked me one question. Now you're going to a different point. It's genetics versus. So what you, you do you find. think blacks have higher testosterone? Yes. Mm -hmm. that makes them have a higher like that they they're more coordinated at a young age that they're more active physically <laughs> yes sure yeah that they're more social more gregarious yeah what's your point what's your point though? well my what? point is you think there's a difference and i'm saying that i never said people that. go ahead i'm sorry me. sorry Excuse go ahead me. you never said there's a difference no, I, I no. I, 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 I think you're jumping from point to point. This is why your vocation in life is to find a bridge and jump off of it. Because yes. I said to you, is there a difference between blacks and whites? And your response was, yes, there is. There is genetically, yes. But as far as how I treat people, no. 